What's up guys? We are back with another video and today we are actually interviewing a student of Closer Cartel, Mr. Aiden Levitt. So yes. Aiden came all the way from Ohio yeah. and is here visiting a client that we actually helped him get a job with. So we're going to talk more about that. Um, but super excited to have you, bro. Yeah. Thank you for, for coming over. And uh, yeah, we can just dive into this. Yeah, I'm excited, dude. This is like crazy. First interview? I say, yeah, first interview. You said first some person in Closer Cartel. You've it is, person, it is. Right? So you are the first person we've actually, that I've actually met in person because everybody's around around the world. Yeah, like all over the place. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. So I want to start off and ask you a little bit of mm -hmm. like, who is Aiden Levitt? What is your yeah. story? Like, uh, how did you get into online business and, and what led you here? Yeah, so I feel like we should go back like 20, late 2019, early 2020. So mm -hmm. before that, I probably like discovered, I guess you could say like money Twitter in like early 2019. Mm -hmm. So 2020, I bought someone's course. I can't remember who, like e-com course. I was like, I want to do it. I want to like try drop shipping. I keep seeing everyone talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like somewhat easy money. Like I didn't have a lot to invest in my business. I had like some debt I had to pay off. So I like used all the savings I had, bought this course for like a couple grand. Mm -hmm. And it's like January to like March when COVID hit. And it's like, all I did was like study the course, try to implement it. And then right when COVID hit is when I was like planning to launch like my first drop shipping store. And it just yeah. like went to hell. Yeah. Cause you know, you can't, the supply and, chain yeah, it's like and... broke and you couldn't get anything from China unless you like yeah. paid like outrageous prices. So I'm like, you know what, let's put that on the back burner. So kind of like did away with it, got like kind of like in a rut or, you know, being locked up because COVID, you know, nothing was open in mm. Ohio until like the summer. So got like in a rut of like getting away from online business, just kind of like this watching Netflix, just like not depressed, but you know, like not doing what I was supposed to be. Yeah. And then I saw, I think it was Do Lab, Ian Do, mm. post like a thread June, I want to say that year about sales. And I like read it and I'm like, that's like interesting, you know, like how can you get on a call you sell like a product or a course, you should say, of someone else's mm. to someone that you have fill out a form and you get on a call with them to make sure they're qualified. I'm like, that seems easier than, you know, putting up five grand for like a batch of inventory or like yeah. wasting two grand on that Facebook ads for drop shipping. So I was like, okay, mm. what's that? So I like didn't end up doing anything with him. I was just kind of like on the sidelines, you know, like, okay, I'm going to keep that in the back of my head. Then I think that's around the time I sell your account. Mm. So I followed you. And I want to say, what was it, May of this year? Yeah, because you were you were one the of the original. Group, right? yeah, yeah, before it was even called Closer Cartel, you were yeah, one of the original. Just, like, did it even have a name? I think it was just the sales, sales for sales, sales training, training group. group. Yeah. yeah. So I remember you got in. What was that? Like a thousand dollars at that yeah. point. Yeah. We literally, so I get on the phone with him, and I don't know this guy at all. We get on the phone, and he's like, "Yeah, just Venmo me a grand." I'm like, "Okay." And you did, and, <laughs> and then, then uh, the rest is obviously, history. Yeah, obviously, we're here now. So you, you got into online business through e -com, which yeah. a lot of people do. Yeah, um, and I feel like I should talk about, I think everyone was like sold that drop shipping dream in 2019. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not it's not what it seems. No, like. you have to be, I love e -com. That's like my end goal to like do it full fledged. Like I make a product or I like customize one and like have an exit, you know. I don't know Same. how much it'll be. That's like my, what I've always wanted to do. I like e -com. It's like mm -hmm. energizing to me. Like, I like the chaos of it. I know, some people don't. I think it's fun. No, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm, like, I'm, I'm um, going to have an exit there as well. But you can't, like the barrier to entry, if you like talking to people, and I guess that's everyone usually, yeah. you can't go wrong with sales. So like, it's, I, I guess the way to say like drop shipping, you're going to have to test a bunch, which requires money. And mm. instead of like using that money, I think to spend on ads, especially with all the Facebook shit going on, mm. you're better off doing something like Closer Cartel and having a skill set that not only do you use just for sales, like in the immediate, you'll always use it. If you do an agency, you can sell yourself. Mm. If you do negotiation, say you start like your brand is like huge. You want to like negotiate with Urban Outfitters or Target to get your mm. uh, product in there. You could be like, use the sales for that. Never ending. Like sales it's a, and, and that's what I always tell people. Universal. Is sales is universal. Like yeah. you can apply sales and, and close and make really good money, um, but it's universal. It'll help you in, in your daily life, your interaction yeah. with people, any other business you ever do, which is honestly, that's where the most like macro value is. Yeah. And I mean, you can cash flow with it as well. So. And I think it gives people this level of confidence because especially if you haven't done much in online business, mm. say you've done like a few failed stores or like nothing ever really like took off. Uh, 
because it's really the at bats that matter. Like unless mm. you're like a prodigy, your first like at bat, you're not gonna hit a home run. Yeah. Like you're gonna have a learning curve. You're gonna be bad at something. So this is gonna be like a good foundation. It did for me like to have that like a few wins. Mm. So then you like get that confidence. Like okay, I can do stuff. Like I can make money online. Like it isn't some pipe dream that like mm. uh, blah 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 on Twitter like sold me on like. Everyone, like, everyone from the beta group, I think, not maybe not everyone, like, what, six, 70%, like, is making money from it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that rut I was talking about in, like, 20, like, when COVID hit, I was, like, in a rut. I'm, like, you know, I believe in online business. Internet money is definitely real, but, like, maybe just not for me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I tried it, but then I was, like, no. What? You just had to get some, some sort yeah. of or something. And then, like, I did, like, two things after that. They failed again. Mm. Finally, one took off January of this year, 2021. Um, but like the sales was the first one that kind of gave me that confidence of like, okay, I can do this. Like, mm. like I have a skill set that's valuable to people. Like you always talk about the money exchanged is where values exchanged. Mm-hmm. That's why uh, I don't like cars, food, like why grocery stores, like you need Literally to Literally everything. That's like one yeah. of the like, in, it's intrinsic intrin- intrinsic yeah. yeah i can't say that word that like a car and that have like so much of that value that people mm-hmm. are they're gonna pay for or gas it's you're just gonna not even think about it like i need to eat mm-hmm. and so it's like you need to be this i would say the program is going to put you in a position not only to become highly sought after and valuable mm-hmm. if you do put in the work for it like you can't just buy it be like, <laughs> yeah. okay I'm, I'm a millionaire now from sales <laughs> like you have to do like the mock calls you mm-hmm. have to do uh, this like you have to get the reps in like anything like working out um, and it's this thing to get you to that level of confidence so when you're ready to go out and like actually be in the real world and do sales it's like ironclad like there's no you've seen every situation in a mock call like you can't no, you I know exactly that. what yeah. you mean. Maybe we went off on a tangent on my so, story. No, you're like, good. You're good. So you start you start in e-com, you like hit a couple roadblocks, whatever. Yeah. And then somehow yeah. just found my Twitter. Yeah, right? I found your Twitter and I was like, okay. I saw it before. I'm like, I've always... What about it like um, kind of put you over the edge of, of like, yeah. okay, I'll actually get in on this. So what put me over the edge, I'm like, first of all, I would say a couple months before I saw a lot of people, not a lot because I feel like just now everyone's talking about sales. Mm. So... Maybe like one or two other people. I was like, that's very interesting. Like selling other people's stuff. Like, and you don't do the fulfillment of it. It's very accessible. There's not a mm-hmm. huge uh, startup cost. You know, like the oh, very, it's a skill. It's yeah. not a. It's not any, yeah. any inventory. It's it's literally a skill. It's mm-hmm. yourself, which is which is unique along other businesses. Exactly. I think that's what's unique about it, and that's what stood out. And because I was so kind of beat down, like wasted money, overdrafted. Like I vividly remember the Thanksgiving of that year. I was with my family on Thanksgiving and I had like a okay drop shipping store. Mm. And I just would see Facebook ad charges on my debit card would overdraft my account. And there's a $34 overdraft fee. And I was oh, like, man. like I, you know, there was like moments or like things just pivot. And I'm like, I can't do this. Like yeah. I'm never going to make money this way. Like I'm spending money I don't have and I'm not even breaking even like, and it's like a headache, you know, like I can't even get people their product. Like they're bitching at me on email. Yeah. Like, All because somebody said it works. So you yeah. want to try it and, and whatever. And I, I know I just vividly remember that moment and like just all the overdraft fees and like $800 worth of them. Yeah. And like opening up the Chase app. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, like this is something, something different. So I was pretty like, I'm like something, I like e-com, but some, you, for me personally, I'm not in a position where I, can throw five grand testing and buying inventory, you know, to do it. Well, that's a, that's a point that I think a lot of people, and and we talk about this on YouTube Yeah, is you have to understand like where things fit into the equation. Sales is a lifelong skill, but let's say you want to be a closer. The point of being a closer is not to make a million dollars. Although you can over a couple of years, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like uh, the point of being a closer is to cash flow so that you then can do things. You can't, you can't start without a base, right? Mm -hmm. People want to do e-com, they don't have cash. Okay, how are you going to spend money on ads? They want to build a SaaS company. You don't have cash. How are you yeah. going to pay for Developers XYZ? Developers and yeah. all like the back-end like, stuff that you need. Yeah, that's but- cool. So you start in e-com, you hit some roadblocks, you found uh, my Twitter, which is which is awesome. Yeah. And then you, you obviously, we got on a call, yeah. closed you on the yeah. call to get in. Um, what was your experience from then? That would have been what, like May or? Yeah, I want to say like middle of May, right, was when it was. Yeah. So yeah, I kept kept seeing tweets about it. And I'm like, you know what? And you would, 
met you would like make a tweet like oh dm me i think i dm'd you on twitter and you're like mm -hmm. okay let's hop on a call that's like and i've never um like done that before i'm like I, let's just take a leap of faith like see like let's see what luke has going on like it doesn't hurt to at least hear you know about this program because you i like that you keep some of the details you got to call to make sure mm -hmm. you know you don't want to put everything on the table because you want to like have that what you got to make sure that people are a good fit and it's also exactly. sales too it is sales it's like mm -hmm. not as a little different i would say just because it kind of sells itself mm -hmm. But so that's what pushed me over the edge. I'm like, I know I've always wanted to go down that road of sales, at least check it out. Might, might be for me, might be good at it, might not, mm -hmm. but I'll, I won't forgive myself if I don't pursue it. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm not getting younger. Like this is the time to like do crazy stuff. That's kind of like out of like left field. So I'm like, you yeah. know what? We're getting on. And I'm like, okay, I finally made money from one of these drop shipping stores. I'm going to mm -hmm. use that. So we got on and it just made sense. Like, mm -hmm. Um, so, so you get in, yeah, you get in yep. that and then day what you, is your experience immediately? Um, yeah. and then until let's say not, not present day, but the next, well, yeah, like, we could do that after like, yeah. yeah. So that day Venmo, you got added to, I want to say the Slack channel, right? I don't mm. think we had like a course, like, no, a, we didn't yet. Uh, what, I don't know. Teachable is that or that that's, on? that's where it closed our conversation yeah, that's what I thought. Now, so but it was, it was initially like just a group. And yeah. Calls. Yeah. So we get in the group and I, it was kind of like we were just waiting for the first call, like kind of meeting everyone. And mm -hmm. immediately I could tell everyone there, good group, mm -hmm. you know, like, because, so I live in a small town in Ohio, like kind of like you do, yeah. did, because you moved to Dayton right after. Yeah. Okay. So I wasn't surrounded by people in real life that even get online business. Like my mom tries to be supportive, but she doesn't get it. I don't my mom's think. the same yeah. way. Bro. My dad completely doesn't get it. I could make like a hundred million dollars. He's like, oh, you should still get a salary job. You know, it's secure and they have health insurance. I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> that's like he's supportive he doesn't you know what i mean he's like yeah. stuck in that he's had the same job his whole life and he's like 56 yeah. so he doesn't no i shouldn't say loyal but it's like he doesn't move he likes likes what he likes mm. like very on the straight and narrow so i haven't been surrounded by like anyone so mm. immediately that was the first thing i noticed like this is cool finally around people that get what I want to do, they get online business, and it's like can motivate you. Because mm. it, it's kind of can get hard to motivate yourself when you're not motivated by your surroundings. Oh, yeah. And like it the gets peers lonely. you're around. Yeah. And you're totally like that quote, you're the average of the five people you're around is so true. Mm. Like you have to be, you don't need to cut people out. I'm not of that camp where you need to like viciously cut out your childhood friend that would like take mm. a bullet for you now. But like maybe add in a few people that are ahead of you. So like first thing I noticed, these people like mean we can relate to each other and we're gonna help push each other. Mm -hmm. First thing I noticed. Then, first call, I think it was like two weeks maybe we got it. Yeah, because we had to give enough get, people to Yeah, we got more people join. in. Yeah. I think that was like maybe the first batch. Then we had like second or third round of getting everyone in and then we did the first call with Ace. Mm -hmm. And immediately, or was it with you? Um, I can't I can't remember, it was so long ago. You know, I feel it, like I feel like the first call was both. I think and so. And it was kind of like a, like a welcome and, and second yeah. time. Yeah. First thing on the call, energy was like good you know what i mean like i'm like okay this is like i made the right choice you know because i feel like some people on twitter you <laughs> would join a group of theirs and you're gonna be there's disappointed. a lot of there's a lot of scammers there yeah. are people that totally and i think too because i'm like when i was tw 19 or 20 it's so mm. i would have totally believed if like wide eyes everything and it's like you can scam people mm. but so that's the first thing i noticed ace knows what the hell he's talking about oh, yeah. immediately the first thing like this guy is a killer at sales and, like, and for everybody that doesn't know ace is our one of our yeah, full-time sales coaches in, inside he's every he has bulletproof advice he, mm -hmm. there's a situation that comes up i guarantee you he will know how to handle it <laughs> yeah. he has a story about anything that could go wrong or like yeah. some weird thing or like any weird situation ace has dealt with it at least once yeah yeah i like other thing i noticed about ace the honesty mm -hmm. he would share like i remember him talking once so he was always talking about how we you need to somewhat be able to relate to the people you're selling to. So he was working with a, I want to say it was a course for like uh, plumbers or electricians in New Jersey. Hmm. And he said he just couldn't connect with them. Not some of them he could, but like over across the board, he just couldn't connect with them. Hmm. And he's like, I need to get on a different offer. You know, this isn't clicking. It's not fair to anyone, me or the person whose offer it is. Hmm. And just that, I was like, I like someone that's honest isn't and isn't going to act like he is a killer all the time, you know, hmm. like. And that's a just good advice too, like especially when you're starting out, like it might not be perfect. Mm. Like props to starting off to do something that you might not be great at at first. Like mm. 
I think a lot of people are afraid to do stuff that they might be bad at at first. For sure. And like with this, you and that's sales, bro. Like yeah. Everybody, I, I think we were talking about this in the car. Like people start and they suck usually. Mm-hmm. Like even after you were trained, my first call, you started on a new. I got off of it and I just sat there like that was not good. I like <laughs> just stared down at like it was yeah like I you just gotta go through it though you have to yeah. get, go through the motions of it. But that's the first thing I noticed. Ace took the time to like. So in the call, everyone would bring up questions. There is like kind of like a conversation. Mm. It's like first half was, at least when we did the calls, was uh, informational, like very good strategies. Mm. Um, I think the first call is the uh, blueprint, the mm. doctor frame you always talk about. Yep. Very key, the structure of the calls. It chronologically went through the phases of the call. So it did the overview, then we went through beginning to end. Mm. End is the hardest objection handling. Mm-hmm. We went through on at least one of the calls for about a month and two, month and a half, two months. Um, we would go on, learn the info, you know. Then we'd have like Q and A. Everyone get to talk. If any, someone had a question or like uh, we need to do a role play or mm-hmm. you know just drill down on a certain issue, maybe someone had a question that something wasn't clear. Mm-hmm. We would just do that. So it was like everyone's questions were answered. I had a good community. You were surrounded by other people in the exact same situation as you. Most of the people were beginners. Mm. And even the ones that had a lot of Excel sales experience, it was different than our sales. Mm. Um, and that's, that's a reason that I brought Ace on was like, obviously I'm, I'm very good at sales. Like I'm to the point where I can teach other sales. Uh, but even I'm 21, you know, like exactly. Ace has been in sales for 30 years, yeah. which is longer than I've been alive. So yeah, uh, that, that was That's why was in the group. He's like yeah. done sales since we were like, I mean, he, not even a bro, he, he used to be like a drug dealer and then he got good at sales and cool, cool His, story. Yeah. He has a cool story. Yeah. But, uh, no, that's, that's awesome, dude. So that was the next couple of months, obviously, cause it yeah. still wasn't closer cartel. It was, no. it was our beta. So basically twice a week we would just get on and just chronologically go through how like the formula to do sales the way we do mm-hmm. and our I, sales process yeah yeah and what really stood out too as we went further along i used to think sales i think i told you this in the call was used car sales and i that's oh my, talk about that because yeah. people, people yes this is key. Have a huge yeah okay so like i was never in the camp like fuck sales i'll never do that that slimy like mm-hmm. that is you know, like snake salesman, like no. Yeah. And then that, that's where the tweets, I should have went with that in the story. Yeah. But like, that's where the tweets started turning around my perception of it. Like, no, it really isn't. Mm. You're almost doing an injustice to these people by not doing sales the way we are. Yeah. Because like the programs you're probably going to get as offers are very life changing to people, mm. especially like fitness ones. Like that will revolutionize like their well being and like mm. everything about their life. But so I used to think sales was like, you go to the car sales, like the car dealership, and you're just like drilled down, like again, bombarded, like with this like sneaky tactics and like fake scarcity, you know, worst of the worst, like super sleazy, like, mm. oh, I'll throw in a thing of max or like I'll run your credit 18 times, but you can't actually qualify. So I just yeah. fucked your credit up for a couple months. Like, so I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't think sales are for me or like, I always thought it was like traveling, like the people you meet on the plane, like, oh, I travel for work. What do you do? Sales. I go three times a week and yeah. uh, sell microwaves to office buildings, like super yeah. boring, <laughs> like nothing exciting or like nothing that's even fun to sell, you know, where mm. you can connect with people. That's how I viewed sales. And how, how is it in reality of, oh, of what we teach? Yeah. So I would say, you know what it is? All it is is conversations with people mm. and you listen to where they're at, see if what you're selling is in a work form and then at the end you position it in the way that they realize the value of it Mm -hmm. and like work through stuff. It's basically presenting people with an opportunity. Um, It's not pushy. It's not Mm -hmm. sleazy. It's not like hard selling at the end. It's like, uh, if you're good at it, they sell themselves, which is the beauty of it. That is exactly how I word it. If you ask, if you follow the framework that the whole like, all the modules teach mm-hmm. it, it sells itself and you basically like just get to hear people's stories you that's like what you want you want people to open up to you mm-hmm. um it's kind of like now just me and you talking i've met you for the i know who you were but like <laughs> in person and just like this like yeah. just asking questions it's uh not sleazy it's not like uh what would be the word it makes you it, it honestly makes you feel good when you exactly. when you find a fit that let's say you sell like a weight loss offer yeah. like you said 
someone's overweight, they're yeah. unconfident, they're struggling. They have health problems. They have like health I problems. have pre-diabetes. I need to yeah. my doctor and, says and I you need get to them into a program that's like, okay, maybe it is a couple grand. Like you're going to make a commission on that. Yeah. Because everybody has to make money, but yeah, you spent you your just time doing it. Changed that person's life, or you gave them the opportunity to change their life. Yes, I would say after I have a good sales call, you get this like euphoric feeling, like hmm. that, like I'm excited for them. I want them to like have that success that we talked about and that they told me we when we asked about what they want to do they let me know that and i know this is that bridge between them there and their future self mm. like it's a good feeling versus you wouldn't feel good after selling a single mom um yeah. a car that she doesn't need or you uh did something sleazy with her you lied about the warranty you wouldn't mm. feel good about that or Not like a teenager her first car his or her first car like 16 you know they you charge them two grand more than you should, and they ask their whole bank account. You wouldn't feel good after that. Yeah. You're not. You are like I guess value that gets them point A to point B, but not not really. Like mm. it's you almost have to remove every pre notion you have of sales to realize this type of sales. And because sales is a broad word, this very is, broad. That's why we we call everything closer cartel mm -hmm. rather than sales because closing. Versus selling is way, way different. Exactly. They're two different worlds. That's cool though. Um, so, I mean, that's awesome. You you went into the program. Obviously, you had a great experience. You came in as a yep. complete beginner. Zero. Uh, so, like, I want to talk about no. now, yeah. which is awesome. So, we, we actually helped you get a gig. Yes. So, talk a little bit about, I think that's another, about that. Yeah. So, <clears throat> went into Closer Cartel, right? Pre code. Yeah. Beta <laughs> closer Cartel. Anyway, no, zero sales experience. Still like a. Um, like 10% skeptical. Like, okay, let's see what this is all about, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got, everyone has a little bit of skepticism and completely wiped away the first call. Yeah. We get in. I'm just <clears> like <throat> like a sponge absorbing everything. I'm like, okay, what's this all about? Like what's best practices? Then this is kind of where the tide turns. The mock calls. Like that is probably the crucial, maybe not crucial. I think the offer placement's crucial, but this mm -hmm. is that you, that's something you can't recreate. That's no, very you, unique you about what, what, you what, you, what you're you doing. Do yeah. yeah. So that's where the tide really turned. Like I have, you you need application of the knowledge you're learning to really get it in your head and for it to be useful. Mm -hmm. So that's where the tide turned. I remember we would get on, everyone was very into mock calls, super supportive. We all would give like super good criticism. Mm -hmm. So like super constructive. And, you know, we were in a spot where like, we all felt we knew each other at that point. We could give constructive criticism. We knew it would be taken well because I know some people don't take criticism that yeah. well. But you got to get rid of that if you want to get better at anything. Mm -hmm. So that went into it. No experience at all. Learn the stuff. Now, this is, I think, where it's even better now. After, do you guys do now after you learn the material where you do like role playing on the calls with Ace? Yeah, so, been on them so people, if you guys don't know, mock calls is essentially to get yeah, good should, at something. Sorry, we should go talk yeah, about like that. you yeah. have to put reps in, right? Mm -hmm. So like... Uh, sales especially is a very like repetition dependent thing. Definitely. I can teach people like, like I can teach Aiden, whatever, but if he doesn't put reps in or we put reps in with him, he's not going to get better. So a mock call is we come up with fake offers yeah. and make them as realistic as possible. And then we basically like, let's say Aiden and I were doing a mock call yeah. and we're selling um, this for just whatever reason, yeah. like he would be the buyer. I would be the seller. I'd be trying to sell him yeah. this and we would re record that call. And then our coach would review it and get yeah. feedback on that. And that's how you improve. The same way, like, if you played a sport yeah. in high school, whatever, you watch film, you see where you went wrong and you improve. Uh, sales is the same way. So that's a big part of our, yeah. our community. And that's, like, where the tide really turns. That's, mm -hmm. like, where it gets flipped on. So you have all the best practices, you know, what to do, all that old, like, sleazy sales shit removed from your brain. You have this framework mm -hmm. that's ethical. So you can get behind it. That's another thing. Like, you can be... That improves your confidence because I don't mm. think if you are confident in what you're selling or there's something off about it, you can't close as well because yeah. you truly in your heart don't believe in it. And people can see through that sometimes. Anyway, mm. so you have all the best practices. You and another person, sometimes you do three. I like the three group. Mm. You take turns and you have like an observer that can kind of notice stuff. So you just sell where the San Pellegrino water. <laughs> yeah. You'll go back and forth. You're the closer at one point. I'm the buyer at vice versa. Mm. And you just go... Everyone's first ones are going to be awful. And yeah. we record them so you can look back. That's key, like recording stuff and yeah. looking back. Like weird things you do that you don't even notice. Um, like I, when people, I have one where if people ask a question, I talk too much after. Mm. Like my should shorten the answer because I feel like I'm confident. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm confident when I say it, but when you drag on, some people might take it as being 
not so confident. This little things like that are like mm. uh, saying um too much maybe is a filler word instead of being uh, deliberate with the word you say. You mm. pick up on stuff and you basically, it's really where the magic happens of like you get 1% every be- 1% better every call. Mm-hmm. You start to realize, okay, I need improvements in this area. Like the beginning part of the call, I was solid. Now I maybe that transitions aren't so good in the uh, objection handling. Mm-hmm. Next call, let's focus on that. So it's basically like a workshop. You are going to this, do it, and then you're going to start to dissect what needs improvement. And you have like probably like a hundred, couple hundred now people that you can do that with. No, we, we've got we've got How over many? 200 now. now okay, yeah. so over a couple hundred people mm-hmm. now. And everyone is like super active in that. If you say, hey, let's do a mock today, at least one or two people. Oh, yeah. And, and now we do. I don't know if you saw this because uh, you're you're obviously busy with the yeah, actual I haven't, job. I haven't been as we have call active. reviews now with Ace. Uh, okay. So like, you record your calls. Damn, so we record them. We give you feedback in, in live action. Okay. So we hit one, obviously, like the inside of Closer Cartel. What happened yeah. once you got inside, how the program works, whatever. Uh, but I want to hear about now the reason you're in Miami. Yeah, which why, is, why am I here? Which is, and it's another big component of what we do is, guys, like you can have the skill set. Uh, you can be amazing at sales, but if you don't have a good offer to sell, you're kind of... Like you're, you're you have a gun with bit. no ammunition, yeah. right? You, you don't know what to do. So a big component of what we do is we actually give or we show you how to get or we help you get really good job offers. So one of my yeah. friends, Blake Saunders, actually runs a, a really big agency. Yeah. Um, tell them a little bit about how we hooked you up with, with yeah. Blake and then obviously how, how you're in Miami. Yeah. So now even with the uh, Closeify partnership, basically Closer Cartel connect you into this network of mm-hmm. people, very high value people who have offers for you to sell, offers you want to sell, offers that are going to pay you what you deserve for your skill set. Mm-hmm. So we have like opportunities folder or a chat, I should say. Mm-hmm. And you shot, shot a message over, hey, my friend Blake, he's looking for a closer, apply here. So I one day I woke up, saw it, I'm like, you know what, let's just apply, why not? Mm-hmm. So at this point, I kind of, uh, after we learned everything, I was like, there's like a couple week period of like, okay, now what are we going to do offer wise? You know, so it's the beta working out the mm-hmm. kinks. Like what type of offer do I want? So, you know what, let's do this one. It's good, good fit. Another Ohio guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I applied and we got on a call and it just worked, you know, he, um, super cool dude. He's only a year older than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, what he was doing was really awesome. I think that's key. You got to be on an offer that you like. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just clicked. I'm like, you know what? I, their company is doing really cool things. The energy's good. Uh, it's all around. So what is the, what is the, uh, yeah, what is he selling? Yeah. So they have a real estate lead agency. So basically mm-hmm. they'll just sell. So as a real estate agent, especially in this market, you want listings, way less work, usually way more money when you list a home versus or a buyer's agent, mm-hmm. um, less risk too. Cause if you, I'll put it this way, you can drive around a potential home buyer and if their offer doesn't get accepted, you worked for nothing cause you don't get any of the commission. Yeah. So people don't really like buyers. Um, so they're pretty unique in that lead gen for real estate doesn't typically do just buyer side. I mean, mm-hmm. just seller side. It's usually 50-50 or only buyer side. So basically, we're going to like use data and a bunch of technology kind of. And um, we have a whole team that kind of vets through all the leads. And we sell them the listing, listing opportunities to real estate agents. Mm-hmm. So basically, I get on the phone with real estate agents and see where they're at what their goals are. Cause being a real estate agent, it's almost like your own business. Oh, for sure. So most of them, some don't have goals, it's usually a red flag, some do, but like, uh, so we get on, I'm like, okay, is this going to be a good fit? You know, we have two calls and mm-hmm. I do the whole pipeline right now. That's why I'm down here. So we're kind of rev- revamping our whole pipeline, bringing in more people. Um, so that was really cool to see like start to finish mm-hmm. whole pipeline. You know, I did all the, all the hats for it. Um, so basically, We're selling these listing opportunities, that's in a nutshell, to these real estate agents. Basically, I'm going to get on, qualify them, make sure they actually need listings. Mm -hmm. They can afford to pay for our listings, the opportunity to list them. And just kind of working through objections, you know, is this really working in your long-term vision? Mm -hmm. How long do you want to work with us? Um, So definitely an offer that's evergreen, real estate's never going away. It's not like a fad offer or like a super like fast, like, oh, you can't depend on it being there in a year, you know? No, for sure. Um, so that's why I'm down here because we're kind of meeting, figuring out next steps because new year for real estate, if you don't know, people get like very desperate for leads because the market goes down, you know, mm-hmm. it's cold up north. People don't want to sell their homes and list them as much. So they're like, okay, I need a pipeline. Mm. 
So that's basically what we do. Give people a pipeline of listings, these real estate agents, and I sell them to them. Um, that's so awesome. It's been good. How long have you been uh, like on, on this actual offer? Yeah. What's today? End of October. So mid, mid-August, I think I got on it. It's about two. And obviously like the first first sometimes months is, is like learning the offer yeah. the trading whatever so yeah. i mean that's a short that's a short time frame right it's yeah. like what six weeks eight weeks yeah about eight eight, eight on the maybe yeah. it was beginning of august we'll say like around eight weeks within within that time frame like how much have you closed even yeah as a rookie your first offer it's a new you said you didn't know anything about real no, estate yeah so you had to learn but like how much have you closed in deal volume yeah since then? so we're probably now so we've Paused it for a little bit the last couple of weeks, three, mm. four weeks. But before then, I would say after the first week or two, within a month span, maybe 25, 30 K ish. Is that recurring? Yeah. So it'll be if they do um, a contract for more than a month. Now that, that kind of switches because we have an account manager once they get mm -hmm. on the back end, but that's pretty rare for most offers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say 25, 30 K. It's pretty within. good, bro. Yeah. And I know <laughs> nothing about, not only did I know nothing about sales, we got that taken out of the way. Closer cartel taught it, practice it. Yeah. But about real estate now, real estate's pretty intricate. Um, there's a lot of little nuances and it took me about two weeks to really, so me and Blake did like a week or two of training. Mm. Phenomenal. One of the most patient guys. Cause it was like, I've never done cold calling before. We didn't do straight cold calling, but like mm. how we have it set up, we do cold outreach and set appointments from cold outreach. So it is a little bit of a cold call. Mm. That That's weird. You know, that was new to me. That was I was not very confident in the beginning. Like, hey, Ace also had tips about that. But yeah. any to any offer you're going to be on, he's going to have a tip for it. Anyway, mm -hmm. so about two week of training, two weeks of uh, learning curve. It was the first week was a little rough. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't explain things as well as I should have because just me, I didn't uh, conceptualize it. I guess that's the word. I didn't, mm -hmm. couldn't get it straight or like wrap my head around it fully. So and just realizing what pain points realtors have. What what are they really looking for? You know, what other, what is the competition doing? You know, because in the agency lead gen space, it's competitive. You yeah, know, there's a lot. What's like your unique selling point? Mm -hmm. So getting through that, realizing what we, we have something a little different. How do I make them realize that? How do I put that in the beginning of our pipeline to get them to the end of it so they see the value in it? Mm -hmm. um, and just simply like mock calls, good as you can get practice, but it is a little different once you hit start on that zoom on your it very is. first one i was yeah the first week i was like nervous as hell for mm. the i, I would, like i'm like a, my stomach could be like butterflies i'm like that's you have to detach yourself from the outcome yeah. that's easier said than done like when you've never done it before for sure. you don't want to fuck it up and like yeah you're like it's when someone i know in the group like yeah it doesn't matter when it's some random person you're like no i, mean, I mean that's a big that's a big transition that's yeah. awesome though dude i mean like to go from like Ecom to uh, I don't know what sales is to learning sales yeah. in a short time frame to getting with an offer and I mean as far as businesses go like Blake's business is like a very yeah. legitimate well run uh, machine so like what is your like what's your earning potential within within yeah. this role obviously it's been a short amount of time but yeah I would say so it's gonna be exponential as mm -hmm. we kind of scale up and so what we did we kind of we're like in a scaling phase right now. That's why they brought me on. Mm. I would say earning potential. Once we get, I'd say January ish, it could be 30, 30 K a month and above. I would say if we have That's our, amazing. It's like, like 300,000 yeah. a year plus. And like, I'm telling you once you get like, just when you get connected to the right people. So eventually our goal, we have an idea of bringing on other sales people that I'll kind of be the manager of the whole sales department. Then you'll make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So it, then there's like a salary or we can figure that out. Like, yeah. so it's very cool. Like when you get connected, cause these business owners are going to get connected, but are going to be like super high value. It's like badass people that are like, you want to be around yeah. and are like, you know, like push you and like introduce you to the new concepts and people. Mm. So I'd say yeah, 30 K right now, I would say it hovers between, five seven k a month so not bad especially thinking you just started and it's we do cold this is like cold outreach like this is all yeah. outbound so no inbound i think yeah. i've been like two inbounds that's what we're kind of working on now mm. getting our system down and that's like pretty crazy to think about within six weeks i've turned around that much all from you're always making six figures as a rookie within yeah. <laughs> within six weeks yeah. which is awesome and so uh, dude that's cr that's crazy that's so crazy and i mean i tell everybody like uh, on the channel and everything else, earning potential, we kind of plan it as ten to fifty thousand a month, yeah. and and that's 
Obviously and that's, achievable with yeah. what you're doing. I would say you have to be patient at the beginning a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's so possible. Like don't, if someone's like ever be like, oh, you'll never make above 10 or 20 K. Like don't listen to that person. Like yeah. that's a limiting belief. 100%. And those aren't bullshit. You, you could think they are, but like that's all things are is limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. it, you know what it comes down to? You got to take responsibility. Like, if I'm not making what I want, I need to get better or up my volume. Mm -hmm. Now, if that means leave an offer because it doesn't have the volume you need. Well, it's simple. It's simple math, which I love. It is. About it's super simple math. Yeah. You, if something isn't working, go fix it. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Whether you get a new offer or you tweak your offer, you say, hey, I'd love to work with you still, but I'm not hitting the numbers and I know like it's possible. We Every day we hear someone new that's like, just did this, just did that. Like, yeah. It's not like... Oh, there's 10% now. It's like, it just keeps coming. It's inspiring. You're like, if they are, why am I not? Like, yeah. they're just like me. Like, and I'm not in sales. I have no like gift, you know, like, oh, but like, yeah, you can think, oh yeah, but they're special. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> My mom thinks I'm special. Whose parents don't, but like I'm with sales, like. I would say it was not my gift. Talking to people is, but that doesn't translate into being good at sales. Yeah. Um, it's just like being committed to it, like kind of grinding. I hate I hate using that word sometimes, but like yeah. you just be patient A with yourself. You know, it's okay to be bad at something. Mm -hmm. Like don't beat yourself up because sales, you was it you who tweeted this? Like is one of the only jobs you get paid to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're gonna get paid at the learning curve. You're yeah. going, you're there's no unpaid training for it. So you're you're going to get exponentially better mm -hmm. and that like the ceiling is high if there even is one depending on your offer um so i think the shoes i was in no sales experience for going overdrafting my bank account a grand no sales experience fed up with e-com to within the six weeks like uh you know i did have sales training but no prior experience in a market i know nothing about mm -hmm. it wasn't like i was selling an e-com offer where i was familiar with like pain points and the frustrations of like drop shippers or uh, brand owners. I wasn't familiar with anything about real estate agents. Mm -hmm. I I didn't even know this is how much I didn't know. I didn't even know you split the commission, buyer agent, with seller agent. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. I go, wait, what are you talking about? Like nothing. I mean, that's a good testament though to like how, how possible it is. It you know? is. Like, like if, if and, and this isn't like, because it sounds wrong when yeah. people say like, if I can do it, you can do it. Bro, if you can you do can, it, anybody like, can do it. I don't know Jack. I, no, I do. But I didn't know Jack shit about sales yeah. in July of this year um, or real estate for that matter of fact. <laughs> and now what is it? October. Yeah. And I literally like, think of this too. Like I, oh, two weeks ago, I wasn't even supposed to be in Miami this weekend. Yeah. Supposed to be in Columbus. Like, or not this weekend, this beginning of this week. Like. It's crazy. Like I never thought no, that I would meet Blake or you and it just like. Yeah. Bro, your life, and, and it sounds cliche, but your life has changed. Yeah. Like forever. And like when I sent you that tweet, that, that message, I messaged you like, you're going to change like hundreds of people's lives. It's true. Like yeah. in this, like it makes you realize what's out there. So I always, because I, I used to live down like north of Miami and I'm like, I want to move back at one point. And this like solidifies like how quickly you can surround yourself with very high level people that push you mm. and do what you are doing and you know and better you and move to a place that constantly inspires you like the like there's countless people like jake moved, literally flew halfway across the country yeah, for the jake, solar jake thing down here. There's, there's, um, there's a ton bro there's a ton. it's insane like uh just how quickly things can change mm. i was literally like sitting on my couch when i messaged you about um getting in the group, like, and I had no idea that like, I would be here right now. If you told me that, I'd be like, you're a liar. <laughs> why, you, that's not, why, why would that happen? That doesn't seem very like logical. I mean, that's, that's a good thing though. Yeah. What, uh, so we, we obviously don't want to make this run too long, mm -hmm. but I, I want to end this by first off saying congrats. Like it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you're the first interview we've done. We're going to be yeah. doing, I've got first a interview I've ever done. So my, if I'm a little like rusty, don't, don't no, you, judge you me did too a great hard. Job. You did a great job. So I want you to end it with like, um, if, if you're talking to somebody, yeah, like, not even not even like just to get into closer cartel, but if you're just talking to someone that's on the fence of like maybe sales sounds cool or, or maybe taking a leap into something sounds cool, like just one, what's the one thing you'd like to say to kind of to wrap this interview up? Yeah, to that I, person? I would say <laughs> this sounds cliche, but like most of you probably in your 20s, this is where you need to take leap of faith. There's no repercussions. Mm -hmm. There's very we have very little responsibility. We don't have a kid. We don't have. A wife, well, some of us do, but like most of the people yeah. probably don't. Um, 
and now this might be a little harsh, like think of yourself in a year. If say I looked at myself July of 2021, no, 20, what would that, 2022. Yeah. I would have, if I didn't take that leap of faith, I would have never forgave myself, you know, cause I had an idea of what I wanted and I just went for it. You just have to send it. Um, now I know you can overthink things. I'm an overthinker, but no matter where, if you uh, like, can have a conversation with people, which is majority of people, mm -hmm. you can be, there's the baseline is zero. You can make tens of thousands a month doing sales, mm -hmm. which will allow you, like basically any goal you have online business-wise, agency, e-com, uh, I'm trying to think of other ones, crypto. Just everything. <laughs> yeah, you, there is no better like building block foundation you can set than sales. You will lose you sales and everything else and it's going to give you the financial, See, like stability and security hmm. so you can pursue your other dreams or to move up in sales maybe you want to do sales for five years or like be like ace hmm. like the longevity of it and you cannot go wrong like you you have to take the leap of faith nothing good happens in your comfort zone you need to be a little uncomfortable that's good um yeah that's how i would leave it at. that's that's well said and to one more thing is like if they're on the fence of closer cartel, yeah not just sales or business but what would you say to someone on, on the fence of that? Short yeah. And sweet. I would say I, if closer cartel wasn't worth it and didn't, you know, change the trajectory of my life, I would have uh, told Luke to like hit rocks. And he said, you should come over and do an interview. Like I have no, I'm, I'm very blunt. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. So like why I have no, I have no reason to be here unless it was as phenomenal as I said it was, yeah. you know, like you the price is going to keep going up. If you, can you even book a call right now? Is it like the last day or two? Uh, I mean, they can if, if they message me when yeah. we're switching the funnel. And, yeah. yeah. And anyway, that's all like back end. So anyway, yeah. now's the time. Uh, you probably aren't going to do this forever. No, you, definitely not. Um, I've been on the fence about stuff before. I've been in the same situation as you. Like, you know, is this worth it? Nine times out of ten, yes is the answer to that question. And I have still beat myself up over some of the opportunities a year ago that I didn't pursue simply because I was nervous or afraid. I still like beat myself up over, over it. Mm. I have one of those days where I overthink stuff. Like I still got, if I would have done that wonder would have happened. Don't, don't live in what if, and I wonder if mm. do it. You're not going to regret it. Um, I have no skill set in it. So if you don't either what you can be where I am, like there's no, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in the way, but you like, you're not, you, a, you won't regret it, and B, a year from now, your future self will be so thankful. Mm. Um, the, the price is only going to keep getting more. This is the best deal you're going to get. And Closer Cartel has gotten like 15 times better than since I joined. It has. It really has. Like the mock crazy. calls, because we're the beta group. All the kinks are worked out. Like it's down yeah. to a science. You get access to a guy that has 30 years in sales to personally review your sales call. Where else? Message me on Twitter if you can find it. Where you can find that, you can't. It sounds like I paid you. To, it is, to, no, but to, like really, you can't though. Yeah. Like you, you won't find that. You won't find someone willing to take the time to do that for you mm -hmm. and help you grow in that beginning phase. Um, there's no, there's no better sales course if there even any at all on Twitter. I don't yeah. think there's any. There's that one, the, the one that can't be said. But I can't think of any. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one. Like this is it. It's awesome. So, I mean, we'll, guys, we'll end it there. Thank you yep. so much, bro. That was, that was amazing. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of student interviews, especially with people that are in Closer Cartel, that are making money, that uh, their lives are being changed. And we want to help as many people as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please comment below. Give us a thumbs up to help the algorithm. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.